the Mills Bellomatic Corporation. <laughs> The way you present your bells to your patrons is very important. If they're on a sturdy base with the machine at the proper playing level, they'll make far greater profit than if you just stick them anywhere, such as an old table or high on a counter. The Jack in the Box is the ideal and most modern improvement in safe stands today. It's sturdily constructed of a heavy steel with a durable finish of a satin black pebbled texture. As the base is wider than an ordinary safe stand, it affords greater stability, and the firm base prevents the machine from riding forward or backwards as it is played. We won't go into the details about the wonderful jack-in-the-box feature. Rather, we'll present the six steps that make the jack-in-the-box just about the best bell stand in the whole world. It fits all modern bells. Number one, an attractive presentation. A jack-in-the-box stand ready for play. Note the wide ledge which can be used to hold drinks or extra coins. The stand is made of a heavy gauge steel. Number two, it disappears like magic. Press the button as shown on the side, but before you press it, a special crank, which is furnished with the stand, allows you to release the bell's weight. Number three, going down. The machine will start to descend of its own weight. If you wish, place your hand on top of the machine and push down to increase the speed of descent. Number four, the cover-up. Metal plate, which is part of the stand, is pulled up from back and becomes a cover. When it is dropped into place, it locks automatically and securely. Number five, presto, it's gone. Now the bell is out of sight the whole action only taking about a minute. Jack in the Box is now an innocent looking piece of storage equipment. Number six, back in business. When you want to bring your bell back into play, simply insert the crank handle into the hole on the side and turn. The machine rises smoothly and easily into sight, ready for play. Actually, Mills never made any promotional film for the Jack in the Box stand. The inspiration for that intro came from an advertisement in the Mills Spinning Reels magazine for July and August of 1949. For those who collect antique slot machines, it can often be hard to get information on these relics of the past. Most searches on the web for the Mills Jack in the Box stand don't bring up a lot of information, so I thought I would make a video explaining how one works, since I got one not too long ago. The stand that I came across was part of an online estate auction in Virginia. An elderly gentleman had this machine and stand in his garage for years, it seemed, and he was going into a retirement home. With two small kids at home, I didn't have the time to preview the item in person, so I ended up doing some of my own gambling by bidding solely from pictures. Fortunately, I won the item and brought a bunch of Allen keys with me to crank the machine out of the stand to get it home. The machine inside ended up being a Mills 21 Bell with a token vendor inside instead of a jackpot and not much original use. All nine original tokens were in the machine with matching numbers. The mechanism was frozen but after a tear down and rebuild, it ran like new. With the machine out of the way, it was onto the stand. The stand was operational but banged up cosmetically, so I thought I would restore it back to its most popular color, which was black. I'm not exactly sure how many colors the stand came in originally. I've seen some blue, some brown, and it appears this one was gray from the factory. There were no indications it was any other color than gray. Now for reference, the original mill stand comes in at 33 inches in height, 17 inches wide, and 16 inches deep, and weighs approximately 45 pounds. The jack-in-the-box stand comes in at a height of 31 and a quarter, 
a width of 20 inches, and a depth at 22 inches to accommodate the machine going inside of the stand itself. It also comes in at a weight of 104 pounds. So once you put the machine on it, you're entering hernia territory at over 200 pounds. Initially, the restoration involves some creative ways of using evaporust to get the rust off of the bottom of the stand. Fortunately, I found a container that was ideal for this purpose on the marketplace on Facebook. From there, the surface was prepped in a combination of semi-gloss black rust-oleum and VHT black wrinkle spray paint was used. I was really happy with how it turned out. Additionally, with restoring the stand, I got to figure out how it actually works. The jack-in-the-box stand consists of the base, a platform that sits inside of the base, a steel spool, an inner frame with arms that attach to the platform, a cover plate, a locking bar, a crank handle, and a steel cable that helps raise or lower the platform inside of the stand. There's also a few other parts that help make the stand work. To unlock the stand, you insert your key and turn from left to right. With the spool out of the way, you can see that the key unlocks a spring-loaded aluminum rectangular piece, which locks automatically when you close the lid. When I first got the stand, I didn't have a working key and accidentally locked the machine in it. Fortunately, I managed to get it back open and I had the lock rekeyed by slot expert Larry DeBaugh. So with the cover plate unlocked, it slides back into the rear portion of the stand and it is held in place by these two pieces that are screwed into each side at the top and by two L brackets on the bottom. With the machine in the stand on the platform, the steel cable connects from the back of the base and feeds through two pulleys on the bottom of the platform, one in the back and then through one in the front. From there, the cable wraps around the steel spool and then connects into the spool itself. As the crank is inserted into the spool and turned counterclockwise, the steel cable wraps around the spool, tightening the cable and raising the platform. The ratcheting sound comes from a dog that inhibits backward movement as the platform is raised, and the inner frame arms guide the machine smoothly and straight up to playing level. With the machine at its maximum height, it's time to gamble. Once you've taken your patron's money, or the law has showed up, it's time to get the machine out of sight by reinserting the crank and providing just enough pressure counterclockwise that the dog can release and drop. With the dog out of the way, the machine slowly descends from its own weight. There's also a leather strap on the other side of the spool that helps with this process. As the platform finishes its descent, it moves apart attached to a rod within the inner frame, which pushes the dog back up, locking it back into place. The original advertisement says this process of descent happens in 10 seconds, but I timed it out at one minute and 16 seconds. It's probably better to be slower than faster. So that's how the stand works. It's certainly a unique piece of its time period. If you have any more information on these stands, send me a note at philipspost at icloud.com. Thanks for watching.